Hello, I'm Jason. Welcome to Algebra 1. We're going to spend quite a bit of time together going through the topics of Algebra 1 that you will be expected to understand, and we're going to solve all of these uh, problems and learn all of these topics in Algebra 1 by working example problems in a step-by-step -step fashion. So you're not just going to get a bunch of lectures, you're going to understand hands-on how to solve these problems. My advice to you is to follow me uh, through the sequence in order and pause the video periodically uh, to make sure that you can understand and solve the problems yourself. So get your own pencil and paper and after I solve a problem, pause the video and solve it yourself. Make sure you understand it and then move on with me. And if you do that, then I promise you, as we move together through this, you will be very, very good at Algebra 1. You'll have a very deep understanding of it. So we're going to just jump right in here. We're going to dive in. We're going to talk about one of the most important topics in Algebra, and that is the concept of a variable. So here we have the concept of a variable. And you, you hear this uh, right away in Algebra, and you're going to be expected to understand it. A variable is a very simple concept. It is a letter that represents a number. I'll say that one more time. It's just a letter of the alphabet, like A, B, C, or X, Y, Z, that represents a number. It's basically a placeholder, because we don't always know in Algebra what uh, what all the answers are, and so we have letters to, to kind of be placeholders for things that we don't know. So, for example, um, you might have the variable A, a very common variable. You don't know what it is initially, so we use the letter A to, to hold, to be a placeholder. But at the end of the day, A might be equal to the, to the number 1, or A might be equal to uh, the number 3, or A might be equal to 7. You get the idea. You might go on and on and on. Basically, it can be equal to any number you can dream up. Uh, and that's why we have a letter to represent it, because we don't know what the value of it, it, of it is. Now, later on, we'll learn how to solve equations and things like that. And so the letter A might be what you're trying to solve for, and you figure out at the end that A is equal to 1. Uh, and that's why we use these letters to, to kind of hold numbers. But for now, just know that it's just a letter that represents a number. So as another example, we might have the variable x. So another very common variable you see in algebra all the time. x could be equal to 0, uh, x could be equal to 1, uh, x could be equal to 2, and so on. And you can see the idea here. I'm just making numbers up. They don't have to be these specific numbers. Uh, any number at all can fit inside of this variable that we're calling x. So as another example, um, you can use any letter of the alphabet. Sometimes you might use the letter b. It uh, just depends. Uh, B doesn't have to be a whole number. Any of these variables, they don't have to be whole numbers. So B might be 13.4, for instance. Or B might be equal to 19.6, for instance. You see the idea here. And I'll give you one final example. What if we're using the variable D? Uh, the variable D uh, doesn't have to be a whole number. It doesn't have to be a decimal. D could be the number 1 half. It's just another number. We just represent it as a fraction. Uh, D could be equal to, you know, 1,024. Uh, D could also be equal to the fraction 3 fourths. So I'm just trying to give you an, a bird's eye view of what a variable is. It's just a letter that's used to represent a number that we don't know ahead of time what that number is. And so we can use it to represent whole numbers like these, or decimals, or fractions. And later on in algebra we're going to learn about imaginary numbers that can hold imaginary numbers and complex numbers and other types of numbers. But for now just think of it as a letter that uh, is used to represent a number. So let's take this idea of a variable and let's let's solve a couple of a quick problems. So we're just going to move up the page here. We'll move that off the page here. And we'll draw a little line just to kind of like separate our work here. And we'll talk about an actual problem that you might see. What if you see something in an algebra book uh, 4n uh, is equal to 12. Now this is the kind of thing you see all the time in your algebra book. First of all, you have the number 4, and then you have a letter written right next to it. When you see a letter and a number written right next to each other, it means multiplication. So normally in you know, basic math, uh, we, we say 3 times 4 uh, is equal to 12, or you know, 6 times 2 is equal to 12. And this letter x here, right here, this letter x represents multiplication. Well, we don't use this letter x to be multiplication in algebra because we're using variables. Remember, we talked about this variable up here. Uh, this variable x uh, is used quite often in algebra, so you'll get confused if you start using x for multiplication. So in algebra, what we basically do is we uh, drop the multiplication symbol. So if you see a letter and a number together, you always know they're multiplied. So this is 4 times some variable, some unknown number, 
is equal to 12. Now let me ask you, 4 times what can equal 12? There's only one number that works here. 4 times what equals 12? And that means that n must be equal to 3 because 4 times 3 is 12. There's no other number that works that fits in here. n, the variable n in this case, has one value, one answer, and that is the number 3. There's no other number that's going to work. So this is a, a, a simple, very, very simple relation that we have in Algebra 1. We're just kind of introducing topics, and I'm showing you how the letters can fit in with the numbers and how this letter has a certain value that's associated with it based on that equation right there. All right, so let's move on to do just some, another simple, simple guy here. What if you have, as an example, 8a is equal to 16? Now, again, when you have a letter and a number in algebra, they mean multiplication. So what this is saying is 8 times something, something, I don't know what it is, is equal to 16. 8 times what is 16? There's only one number that works there. What number is that? A must be equal to 2. That's the only number that works. Okay, so... When you take this letter A and you stick it in here, you can see that 8 times 2 is 16, and it satisfies this equal sign. This equal sign means that whatever's on the left must be equal to whatever's on the right. So 2 is the only number that works there. So these are variables. In this case, N was equal to 3. In this case, A was equal to 2. Now let's do another really quick, simple one before we close here. Uh, what if you had something a little bit more interesting? What if we had X plus 3 is equal to... 3 plus x. What would be the value of x in this case right here? Well, we look at the left and the right hand side and say something plus 3 is equal to 3 plus something. So what's going to happen? What is the value of x that works here? It turns out in this case there's lots of values that work here. What if we start picking numbers here and say, well, what if x is equal to 2? What's going to happen to this guy? Well, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3 is going to give you 5 on the left hand side. And 3 plus 2, because remember, if the, if the variable is equal to 2, it goes in here and it goes in here. So what you're going to have, if you put in the, the number 2, is you're going to get 5 on the left and 5 on the right, which satisfies this equal, equal sign. But what if you put a different number in? x is equal to 7. Then on the left-hand side, you'll have 7 plus 3. That's going to give you 10 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, 3 plus 7 here, 3 plus 7 on the right-hand side, you're also going to get 10. So that means that this is satisfied. So you see, no matter what value of x you put into the left, you're just adding 3 to it, and you're doing the same thing essentially on the right. So no matter what value of x you stick in here, you're always going to satisfy the equal sign. So that means that in this case, you have lots and lots of values, and in this case, x can be any number. That's pretty rare in algebra. Actually, when you have equations like this, usually there's just one value of, a, of the variable that works. In this case, 4 times 3 was 12. There's only one value that worked. 8 times 2 is 16. There's only one value of their variable that worked. But because this one was a little bit weird, you're just adding 3 on both sides of the equal sign to whatever value that you have. Any number for x can work. So this is just an introductory topic of what is a variable. We're going to solve a lot of additional topics. A variable is very simply just a letter that represents a number. A variable is just a placeholder. That's all it is. It's all I'm trying to really get you to understand in this section. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get some more topics with variables. We'll get some more practice with variables in Algebra 1.